Hey guys, if you're a big professional tennis fan like I am, you know there's many different types of personalities out on tour. Just think of Michael Chang and John McEnroe. Those two guys couldn't be more different, right? Or think of Roger Federer and Nick Kyrgios, very different personalities. So in today's video, I wanna go through the big five personality traits that we all have and see how they relate to us as tennis players. In other words, are there certain personality traits that can help us be a better tennis players? And also, are there certain personality traits that are gonna make tennis more difficult for us? So, the first personality trait we're gonna talk about is introversion and extroversion. There's a lot of people that believe that introverts are gonna have a hard time playing tennis, and this could not be further from the truth. Why am I saying this? Because two of the greatest players of all time we're really big introverts. Just think of Rafael Nadal and Steffi Graf, very introverted human beings. And then on the other hand, you can take someone like uh, Serena Williams, also maybe the greatest of all time, who's very extroverted. On the men's side, you can have Novak Djokovic, maybe the greatest of all time, who's also very extroverted. So you can see that being introverted is not gonna hold you back as a tennis player. And see, introverts can really flourish in the game of tennis because it's an individual sport. See, introverts usually don't like being surrounded by a lot of people. This is where they get a lot of anxiety in some cases. And the beautiful thing about tennis is that you're out there by yourself and introverts generally like that. Another thing introverts don't like is speaking in front of other people. And the great thing about tennis is you don't have to speak at all. In fact, you're not allowed to say anything while the point is going on. So it's a, a very easy sport to play for introverts. You can be out there by yourself and you don't really have to talk. So being an introvert will absolutely not hold you back as a tennis player. And the second personality trait we're gonna talk about is whether someone is agreeable or disagreeable. And unfortunately, if you are an agreeable person, you're gonna have a hard time in tennis for the following reasons. So for example, if you're an agreeable personality and you're playing against someone who is treating you really badly, I have seen this in person where agreeable people will just take it. They will get cheated on. For example, the other person will say, oh, I'm up 4-2 even though it's three all and the agreeable person is just in their nature to go along with the program. Or another scenario would be if you have a doubles partner who's very bossy and this can sometimes have a negative effect on your game. So if you're an agreeable person and your doubles partner is bossing you around, telling you what to do, maybe talking down to you, uh, this can negatively affect your game. Another way a player with an agreeable personality type can get a negative outcome on their tennis game is if they get coached they're very agreeable to what the coach is suggesting now unfortunately there's going to be some coaches out there who are going to make outlandish suggestions and i can give you one example of a player that i was coaching who was one of the best players in the state who was also a natural left-handed player and we all know being a lefty is a big advantage but this coach switched this player to play right-handed because this player was very agreeable. They went along with the program and in fact switched their game uh, to play right-handed and the result was an utter catastrophe. So being disagreeable in tennis can actually help you. It can help you not to get cheated on. It can help you to hold your ground uh, with your doubles partner, for example. And it can also help you to challenge authority on the tennis court, whether it be an umpire or coach, or even maybe your parent, if you're a junior player, it's okay in tennis to stand up for yourself because ultimately you know what's best for your game. The third personality trait that is very important is conscientiousness. And this is something that you need to possess as a tennis player. You need to be conscientious. In other words, you need to be a hard worker. You gotta put in a lot of hours on the practice court. Now, the way conscientiousness works as a personality trait, it doesn't mean that you're overall conscientious as a person. So you could be very conscientious on the practice court, but then you could be not so conscientious when you're preparing your bag to go to the practice courts. And I am one of those players. I wasn't very conscientious in preparing my bag. I would sometimes forget my shoes. Once I would forget my racket. I went uh, to a tournament without my racket. That's crazy but it happened and my dad made me aware of this and uh, he didn't put it in a nice way and for that moment on 
I was very diligent and conscientious about packing my bag. So conscientiousness is something that you definitely need as a tennis player, not only on the practice court, but also in the preparation for the practice or matches. Now the fourth personality trait is an interesting one when it comes to tennis players, and that is openness to experience. So let me give you an example. I'm sure you know people who have always been in their hometown and have never left to go anywhere. In other words, they're not very open to experience new things. And of course, you know people who are world travelers and they're very open to experience in many different ways. So when it comes to tennis and professional tennis, that is, you need to be open to experience because naturally, as a professional tennis player, you're gonna be traveling all over the world. At the recreational level, it is unnecessary to be open to experience because you're gonna be playing at your local club and it doesn't require you to see the world and travel but openness to experience comes in many forms you can also be open to experience things such as partying and that is obviously not a good thing to do when you're a tennis player you need to be very disciplined so generally being open to experience can help you but people who are a little bit too open to experience uh, players such as Nick Kyrgios or maybe John McEnroe at times and this is hurt them in different parts of their careers where they were a little bit too open to partying. And the fifth personality trait is neuroticism. If you are a neurotic person, you are going to have a hard time as a tennis player. And what is neuroticism? For example, if you're feeling a little bit of an ache in somewhere in your body, let's say your wrist and you're a neurotic person, you say, oh my god, my wrist hurts and I can't play. This is obviously and you're going to hurt you. You need to be tough. You need to be able to uh, sometimes play through a little bit of pain. Of course, when something hurts too much, you need to stop. But as a tennis player, it's natural to feel aches and pains as you're playing tennis. And one player that I've heard, and I don't know if this is 100% sure, so this is hearsay, but I have heard that Kei Nishikori is very neurotic when it comes to injuries. And I've heard that when he feels a little bit of a pain somewhere, he immediately takes uh, weeks off. And this has come to hurt him throughout his playing career. Now, neuroticism also comes in many different ways. So you could be neurotic about the score and start freaking out and get really nervous and really tight. So usually neurotic people, uh, they're gonna have a very hard uh, being good tennis players. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is not in the big five of personality traits, but it is a personality trait, and that is intelligence. And I get this question asked very frequently whether you have to be intelligent to be a good tennis player. And I'm here to tell you that you absolutely do not need to be intelligent to be a good tennis player. In fact, I have met many very intelligent people who have gone to Ivy League schools who are doctors, lawyers, professors who play tennis very stupidly. And I've also met uh, many people who shall remain unnamed who have not finished a lot of school, maybe they have a high school degree, and they might not be the most intelligent people out there, yet they play tennis in a very smart way. And this is no knock on the professional players, but many of them didn't even finish high school, and yet they play tennis uh, very smartly. So how is this possible? Why am I saying that you don't need to be intelligent to play tennis intelligently? It is because tennis is an intuitive game. It is often played on feel and instinct. You are really not thinking out there. You just going along whatever the match is giving you in an intuitive fashion. So when players play stupid tennis, it's not because they're unintelligent. This is something that people often say, oh, this person is playing so stupid and they're so dumb. And this is often referred to them as a person, but this is not true as I stated before. When someone plays stupidly, and I myself have played stupidly many times, it is often a result of your emotions rather than your intelligence. So maybe you are frustrated, maybe you are tight and anxious, or maybe uh, you're a little bit too relaxed and lacking intensity, and maybe you are a little bit too risk obsessed and you're going for shots that you shouldn't be going for. And often this looks like a stupid game plan, but it's not something that you always have control over. But a good thing is that if you catch yourself in one of these traps, there is a way out and that's called high percentage tennis. So if you find yourself 
doing really dumb things on the tennis courts, really dumb shots, uh, you always can go to playing high percentage tennis, which basically means that you're going to take the ball a little bit higher over the net. You're going to go generally for big targets. You're going to try to extend the rallies. This is usually going to help you avoid playing stupidly and allow you to play smarter tennis.